and welcome. Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf. I'm a brand ambassador for Brother, and today we have two fabulous Brother educators and a really fun show for you. So you're not going to want to miss this one because I almost went want to go to Kim's house right now and purchase that lamp that she has put together. So we are embellishing today and embroidering. We've got Kim and Lewis joining us, and you don't want to miss this one. So I have these two waiting for us. We're not going to make them wait longer. And I just have to tell you, if you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. We are live on the Brothers Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube pages. We can see all of your comments and we will always take breaks to answer your questions. So tell us where you're from. You never know, your neighbor might be sewing next to you, crafting or fishing if you're my husband. All right, so let's bring these two fabulous people up. Hello, Kim. Hello, Good Lewis. Morning. Hi, Lewis. Hi. How are you guys? We're good. Fabulous. Doing well. Doing well. Thanks so much. We're so glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Oh, we are so excited. So I was just giving a little hint that you are uh, doing a little bit on embroidery and embellishing. And then all I have to do is say your, both of your names and everybody's going to know it's going to be fabulous. Huh? And <laughs> I got it. I just took a little sneak peek and I just, I'm just going to share this with everyone. This just popped into my screen and I'm just going to give mm. you a little heads up. Look at that lamp. That's just oh, a little okay. piece of what's going to be happening today. <laughs> so, all right, guys, who would like to go first? Because the whole team is rolling in, the brother family. I even see Wolfpack in here. Everybody's here ready to see what you have got to show. And if you are joining us late, you can save this to your page or mark this page. You can come back and watch replays all day long if you want to. And we'll try to answer your questions then, too. But for now, we are live. So, Kim, why don't you take, take us in the first place position? <laughs> okay. So... Um, some of my friends are aware that we've been um, we've been uh, virtually tearing apart our family room, putting everything back together. So we were down to the studs and the concrete. Um, and in the process of putting everything back together, I was able to get new furniture and new lamps. And um, that that tree lamp that Angela just showed is my probably my favorite thing of the whole project. Um, and at the beginning, the designer showed me the lamp and I'm like, oh my God, that's so cute. And my first thought was, well, the shade is kind of boring, you know, it's kind, of boring, <laughs> kind of boring. And and the guy that my designer said, well, you can embroider something on there, right? And of course my brain, immediately, there it is, boring. Oh, and that thought, is boring. I thought, how in the world can you, what? Like you can't embroider on, it's stiff, you know? So. I started thinking about that and I, I remembered some kind of boring lamps that we've had in my kids' rooms when they were little. You know, the lamp was cute, but the shade was kind of boring. So today I'm going to show you how to do this on your lamp and make it seasonal so you can swap it out. Oh, that's even better. I so, love the base of this, by the way. I said cute? I use this at my cottage right now. I love this. I'll, I'll give you the information. I wanted a little table or something next to that chair, but I also needed light for reading and, you know, knitting. And, and um, he walked me over to that lamp and I, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I said, really, can I afford that? And he said, oh yeah, you can afford it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and so, now it's worth even more with all this embroidery. So I got to tell you, when I looked at, when you sent this photo over earlier, I was thinking, yeah. I have a dress with sleeves with that embroidery on it. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my gosh. So okay, let me so just say before I get started. Yeah. Um, this we're going to put this on a lamp and I'll show you a couple different thoughts. But think about we're talking about home deck today and embellishment. Think about a valance. Put it just hang it over your regular curtain valance or um the drapes that we were looking at originally had like a border along the bottom, you could just insert this into the bottom of your drapes or your shower curtain, or there's so many, like on the bottom of your skirt even, hang it over the regular skirt and turn it into something, whole different thing. So, um, so gonna I'm gonna, very fun. so I'm gonna go over to, um, actually, I think I'll go to the table here first. Okay. Okay, Angela, and then I'll go like, to the machine and then you we just can tell us where to go so when you're at the table okay. give me thumbs up i'll bring you back all right so lewis 
This is going to be very exciting. I Have you ever done anything to a lampshade before? Because I have not. Well, Kim brought that up and I thought, oh my goodness, I had just went through and tried to find, uh, I was looking for something, so I had to go dig through things. And when I was digging through things, um, you guys may have seen this episode of uh, It's So Easy, where we did do home deck. And so, um, Pimp Shade. Oh my gosh, you both are so creepy. Oh, look at that with the beads too. Oh, I like oh, yeah. that. You, gotta, you know, everything needs bling, of course, you know. So today, the only bling is my jewelry. But I did <laughs> do a lamp shade. This is all gold metallic embroidery thread. And I um, embroidered the entire fabric and then put a little trim across the top to make it more finished and added the beaded trim along the bottom. And then this sits on the actual lamp. It's got one of those little holders inside where you put it over and screw the bulb. So this is one lamp shape, <coughs> excuse me, that does embroidery. And then I had some fun fabric. And so. Oh my I God. Did, Kim, can you see that know, one? That's fantastic. So I think it <laughs> would be gorgeous at church on Sunday. So, <laughs> but it is another fun lamp shape where you just <laughs> add the trim and uh, just use the fabric. These are purchased blank. So you can purchase lampshades that are blank and you can embellish them. And then, you know, of course, we got to have the little cushions to match with the beading and everything. So, oh everything good in there. so I have done a little bit of that kind of stuff. Not like Kim's. That was gorgeous. But, you know, a little. <laughs> this is going to be so exciting. I'm watching everyone saying, oh, my gosh, I've always wanted to try lampshades. Well, I'm not going to tell you my lampshade story. I'm going to go to Kim now. Kim? Show us what you've got. I'm going to bring okay. you over here at your table so Lewis and I okay. can follow you. Go ahead. Okay. I don't want to go now. Lewis, you just blew me out of the water here. <laughs> Never mind. Just move on. Police, police, Kim. Yours is stunning. That is just so elegant and it's so simple. But, you know, it's great. You, you know, you bought that lamp that, you know, you purchased the lamp and it had the shade, you know, versus me starting out with a blank. So, you had to be even more creative. So, you know. <laughs> That's hello. very nice, Lewis. <laughs> okay. So, so my problem was I had this boring shade. I was really lucky as my first project that this is a barrel shade. It's flat. It's 57 inches around. And it's 12 inches from top to bottom. So, I cut out a very large piece of stabilizer. Um, this is actually our brother's stabilizer. Oh, I love that stabilizer. It's adhesive backed, water soluble. I love that. This is my favorite stabilizer. Um, and I also used some tool. So I measured out about 65 inches of stabilizer. And, oh, yeah. and I tore out the paper, you know, you, you, I tore it out before I hooped it, actually. So I tore out that paper uh, topping and left the sticky and then placed my um, tool over the top of it and then hooped it. And I started making the design here. And now I'm, I'm moving down. So I did the math, 57 inches divided by the length of the design was about three and a half repeats. So it's going to be about three and a half hoopings. So now I have this extended into the hoop. So when I go to the machine, I'm going to scan the hoop and I chose a design that's easily overlapped without it looking weird. It's kind of a, you know, like a sketchy freehand kind of look anyway. So um, when I go to the machine, I'll show you how I set that up. But now, after I do this part, I will rehoop, move everything down, and just continue to the end. And way down here at the end, I don't know if you can really see it. I marked my end points right oh, there. Oh, yeah, we can see that. That looks okay. great. So I wanted it to go a little bit over so that it would overlap. <clears throat> so when I put it together... I'll have this. This is actually what was on the lampshade when that photo was taken. So oh, it's like, that's, see it? That's awesome. So <clears throat> this is a beige 
tool that I found. If I have a white lampshade, I probably would do it in white. Um, if I wanted to tint the lampshade, of course, I could change it to any color I wanted. Also, if I wanted to use something like this, this Ooh. is so pretty. Oh, so I love that. I, isn't that pretty? I found it in blue, too. Um, now, this has a very open pattern to it. So if I tried to embroider on this, the, the stitches aren't going to lock in the back and it's just going to be a big mess. So you'll have to get some white, well, whatever color your lampshade is. Um, if I had a white lampshade and I wanted to put snowflakes on it, I would put the white tool behind it. You don't lose very much. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, is that is that tool? I have to ask you the shiny one that you have there. Is it uh -huh. does it feel like a little rough to the touch? Like uh, I made sleeves out of it actually, and I'm just asking because it it has like a sheen to it, almost like metallic thread through it. Is that the it, same stuff? It does. It's soft to me. I feel I would feel comfortable wearing this. It's very soft. I oh, I love that. Now I'm bringing up the photo one more time because someone said, I want to just see what we're going to be doing here. This is the photo. So when you hold up that, what she was just holding up, this is where this is what it ended up looking like. And she's going to show you how she did this, but this is what she's talking about. So that tool she was holding up, you can see it now right on here. Okay. So you can play around with a lot. You can start layering this tool if you want to get real fancy. This is with the black tool behind it. You can darken it. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Also, if you want to embroider on lace, um, I've tried, I've done a little bit of bridal. And when I embroider on lace, I like to put some uh, white tool or cream tool behind it too. That makes the white lace stand up if you put a cream tool behind it. So, so play around with it. But um, let me run over to the machine, Angela. Okay. And... So while she's running to the machine, uh, Lewis. Oh, Lewis is yeah. not. Lewis, did you see that? Okay, so that uh, just, and she said that I blew her out the water. I'm like, that's embroidered on tool. Are you kidding me? It's gorgeous. <laughs> I'm thinking, wouldn't that be beautiful as a petticoat or like over a satin or silk um in a ball gown? I'm thinking that oh, would God. be a gorgeous whenever we can go back to the opera and theater. That would be gorgeous. <laughs> I live in New York, so we get dressed to go to the theater. And you know what? I'm thinking use the extra fabric for sleeves. You know me and my, I love my tools. Oh, yes, you know. my removable <laughs> tattoos. <laughs> love that. And All right, Kim, we, we've got you up here. Okay, can you hear me now? We sure can. Okay, so now I have, I have the machine set up. Here's my screen. And obviously, you can use any design you like, but I'm going to use the one that I showed you. I'm going to touch embroidery. I'm going to touch category number one. I'm going to touch one of our newer categories. Where is it? The Zunt number 12. Scroll down, and it's number 19. So here's my design. I'm going to touch set. I'm going to touch edit. I'm going to change the size. So I'm going to make it proportionate here. And now I want to make it um, a little bit wider because right now it's just about under six inches. So I'm going to make it wider until it's 7.02. Whoops, there we go. Okay. And then I'm going to touch edit again. I'm going to touch move and slide it all the way to the top and touch OK. Now I'm going to touch the color. I'm going to change the color of the thread to black. And I'm going to say OK. Now I want two of these. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to touch move, put that back in the center. Move it down. Now I could flip this if I wanted to. You'll have to play with it and see how you like it. I kind of like it like that. Oh, it looks like I have an extra one here. 
There we go. So you see how it's overlapped here. I did that on purpose because when I get all the way around the lampshade, I want to have some wiggle room. I can make the designs a little bit smaller at the end. I can overlap them a little bit more, a little bit less. So I'm going to say embroidery. Now I want to see where exactly they're going to be. So I'm going to scan my hoop. Oh my gosh, it's so quiet. Isn't it great? I love this. It's like, is it even on? It's just so quiet. <laughs> it's wonderful. I was um, I was actually, while you were doing that, I was I was digging out my jacket, which I'll show in a second, because it's the same the same tool that you have. And all of a sudden I looked down because I didn't hear any noise. I thought, uh oh, did I click the off button on the live show? I'm so <laughs> occupied by looking for my sleeves. <laughs> it is okay, a quiet there we are. Machine. All right. So there's our design. And up here, you can see a little bit that's showing through. And here's where it's going to overlap. So I'm just going to close that. And what I've done before is save that into the memory, put it in the machine memory. When I bring that back now, I don't have to redo everything. Um, and at this point, I would just. I would just um, put the foot down and start sewing. So you don't have to sit here and watch that whole thing. <laughs> but I love it. So uh, everyone's going to ask you what machine you're using. I'm using the Luminaire. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yep. yep. And uh, so the question might come up too. Uh, I'm going to switch back over to here. Okay, I'm gonna. She's gonna come back and join us here. Uh, so Tammy, uh, everyone knows I love tool. Uh, so I'm just gonna show Lewis. This is my jacket. It's not gonna match what I'm wearing right now. But I found these designs. This is a very similar tool that has the shine on it. Now it, it was black tool, and I did black with um, metallic thread on here. Isn't that cool? That is it. absolutely gorgeous. Oh. It's so sexy actually you know you're gonna have to make something like that for valentine's day coming up so you can be sexy for your honey <laughs> i'm thinking so um or i'll make him something i don't know but yes tammy i do carry a tool on my website at angelopatterns.com i've got a ton of a ton of colors a ton of colors i i can't even survive without having tool here somewhere because i'm an embroiderer but now the lamp is the coolest thing i've seen so kim yes after you did that so you embroidered the entire piece I did. Do you want to give them some tips for how to get rid of the stabilizer and how you finish putting it together then? Yes. So after it was completely done, I flipped it over to the back side, peeled the stabilizer off very carefully, and then I cut all around the design, just around the design so that the design stood by itself with the stabilizer behind it. And then I have a big old, uh, it was a pretzel jar from the wholesale club, you know, those great big plastic jars. I stuffed it in there, dumped in some water and shook it, <laughs> emptied it out, squeezed it, rinsed out the jar. And I had to do it twice actually to get that all out. Um, mm -hmm. I dumped the, the sticky water out in my side yard because I have some nasty mint that I want to kill. So far, <laughs> so far it likes that. <laughs> I mean, we've had freezes and everything, and that mint is still going. So, um, but don't dump it down your drain. Take it outside, put it where you take your, you know, whatever, whatever, in a nasty part of the yard. And then, <laughs> then I brought it back out, patted it dry with a towel, lay it on your, this is where your big wool pressing mat comes in. I laid it face down on the um, pressing mat and put a cloth over the top of it and then just pressed it and just made it nice and flat. That's and so then, easy. Yeah, it is easy. And then you wrap it around your uh, lampshade and I just pinched it in the back and put pins in there and put a little seam down the back. I think you could also use that uh, loopy hooky stuff and you know stick it together that way too. Um, I've also been online looking for the bridle buttons. Oh, 
Yeah. And just that make, would that, be cool. make it a feature and just put the bridal buttons down the back because you can, you can dye those different colors and right. um, it would be really pretty. Uh, I didn't have time to order it. So, but that was another thing. And then I had the problem of, um, I have a white lamp as well. <laughs> I I got to tell you, while we're what? talking about tool, Tammy, I love your autocorrect. No, she was trying to write, I love tool, and it wrote toilet. She's like, oh, darn, autocorrect. Yeah, no, we're working in tool. You could wrap your toilet, though, I guess. <laughs> I'm so glad you knew what she like, meant what because she I said, do you carry a toilet in your space? And I said, a toilet? <laughs> I want to see the toilet now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she has a special toilet, a fun toilet, right? <laughs> there she said yeah, toilet. You know, I want <laughs> one of those new <laughs> toilets that's got the uh, heated seat and the bidet and it's got the uh, play the music. Makes I know we're noises like, oh, when you sit down. <laughs> yeah, How did this go music. from lampshades to toilets? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Angela's show. Only exactly, on exactly. Well, before I go, I want to make sure Lewis has enough time, but my other lamps have a little bit of a curve. They're not straight all the way around. So if you have that, you'll need to make a little template. See how this is curved? Yeah. So I took a big, actually, you see, I taped it together because I ran out of my giant roll of paper. I laid that down. And if you lay your lampshade right on the edge, and you just hold a pencil and just roll it as you go and let the pencil draw a line and then measure up. I think this one was 10 inches. I measured up 10 inches and now I have a template for my next lampshade that has a little bit of a curve because you want it to fit nice and tight so it looks like the embroidery is actually on the lampshade. Um, so that That's was my- great that's a great idea because I could see people just making one straight line. And if it is curved, like the one even that Lewis had held up, right, that would not work. Right. And the other tip too is think about um, my, the first thing I thought of, my kids are all adults now. And, um, but at the time when they were making these cute little drawings of people, I thought if I had those still, I would be scanning them into the, into the machine and putting their drawings all the way around these lampshades for their bedrooms. Oh, gosh. Oh, Wouldn't that, that be cute? Yeah. So cute. That's yeah. so cute. With their little names. You know how they write their names. Um, The water, so far I haven't noticed whether it's hot or cold. I usually use like whatever comes out of the tap. Um, And most of the rolls do give you directions on whether it should be warm or cold. And then, or hot or cold. And then you also can check out on our website at brother.com. There will be with our accessories um, information. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Lewis. And because each one is different. And it you know, is. I find uh, that I like I like to get her done. So I'm rinsing it with hot, hot, hot. Like I put a mm -hmm. bowl with hot, hot, hot water and I put a little bit of fabric softener that I learned a trick from somebody else. I didn't make that up. And, um, and it really makes it soft and smell good too. And then I dump mm -hmm. it all out. <laughs> I'll try that on the mint. Maybe the fabric softener will do the trick. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I'll try it. I don't know. But um, well, now, if you do I've have hard this... water. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, if you have hard water, you want to use a fabric softener in your oh. water, or you could use the um remember Vaseline Intensive Care. Sorry to name a brand, but I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's not a brother brand, but we got it. <laughs> but Vaseline Intensive Care, <laughs> uh, the, um, those beads, those, the beads you used to put in the water. That's yes. a water softener yes. is what that actually is. Yeah. So it makes your water soft. And once it's soft, it's safe for that to run down your drain. It okay. can't go okay. down if it's hard. Um, but if it's soft, it breaks it up and turns it into cellulose. And then it just rinses in the septic. Oh, that's yeah. perfect. Oh, how do you attach it to the lampshade? Let me show you. Can I do that real quick? Sure. Okay. I don't mm. want to take up Lewis's time. No, so, no. Let's see how you do it. So here's the lampshade. And here's the little, I call it my little skirt. So we just, I have it sized exactly. So we just slip it over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a tank top. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> <laughs> 
I was thinking that was like, like a little skirt or uh, that could be a Valentine's outfit. Exactly. I mean, that's pretty much it. I didn't, I didn't do a real good job, but, um, but that's it. And you can't see it. No. Oh my God. This isn't straightened out real nice. Like if it was for real, but um, I just, I just really love that. Oh I have, yeah, you, can, you can take it off. You can change it out for seasons. Um, you can change it if you change your decor. Um, you know, whatever you want, actually. You, we all, you know, if you have an embroidery machine, you're pretty much, the world is your oyster, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness, Kim. That is so clever. And, and so the, easy. The tool is a little bit stretchy, so you don't have to get it exactly, like, really super tight. Just as long as it'll pull over the top, you'll be okay. Super oh, fun. So it's spanked for a lampshade. Pardon me? It's spanks for a lampshade. Exactly. <laughs> no, no uh, affiliation to brother. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Everybody's saying, love it, love it, love it. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Hi, brother. Thanks for letting us take over the page. So we have more. We're not finished yet. And let me just bring that lampshade up one more time so you guys can see the final look here, which was so cute. Gorgeous. This was the full lamp. I love the base, by the way. I keep and I, I love, love your that. pillow. In case anyone missed that, you'll have to come back on and do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So, Lewis, what do you have for us today? Because Kim and I, this is way too much fun, and I have a feeling that it's going to roll over into your. You're working on the scanning cut a little bit today, aren't you? Yeah. Well, you know, I Kim did some stuff with the embroidery machine, and so I like to then counteract her with using the scanning cut to show how you could use them together and that it does you, you can also use it as standalone you do not need to use it with the machine however if you choose to you can let the scan and cut do some of your embroidery work for you and so one of the things that i did now these are fabric bases so this applique is a built-in embroidery on the luminaire and oh. I had the machine cut it for me. And this is silk on silk with gold metallic thread. And so you put, um, you know, everybody is, you know, trying to cheer people up and make people feel better. But wouldn't this be a lovely uh, planter holder? So you could put a plant in this. You know, you put your, I, this. these will be lined with plastic if you're going to do that. But then if you can see, the crystals on it, the little crystals are done with the rhinestone kit from for your scanning cut, but every side is different. And so you just, <coughs> oh, excuse me. You just go along and embellish and play and have fun. There's no right, there's no wrong. I monogram whoever is getting it. And so this actually had, a tu had tulips in it since it has the pretty crystal tulip pattern. So this was given um, as a gift um, to myself, because it's got the beautiful big <laughs> monogram from Brother. And this is the one that normally would have the flower um, embroidery on the stem. Um, the thing to remember, if you have that uh, any of those machines with that large embroidery monogram that doesn't have, that has the flowers on it. Well, I didn't want the flowers on it. I wanted it to be a little more masculine even though it's got the crystals in the tulip, hello, masculine. But um, you can take those out and you still get a perfectly stitched monogram with it. And then I added a trim at the top to finish it off and make it nice and finished. And I make these for all different occasions and different holidays. So at Christmas time, um, you know, I did it in the reds and the greens and the golds and oh. the, again, an applique from Scan and Cut and then the crystals again. And then this one has a different pattern. So again, oh gosh, all metallic thread. Brother, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's gorgeous. I love it. And now this has the liner in it, and so you can fill this with water and put flowers in it. But this is all you need. You have your, you know, plastic liner, and you switch this out whenever the holidays or whatever season or whatever the mood is or whatever, and you pop on a new cover and you get a brand new cover for it. So that was a. Those are a lot of fun and really simple and easy. Um. But another thing, one of the things that I did recently, again, talking home decor, you know, oftentimes as sewers, embroiderers, we think of, especially with scan and cut and the paper stuff 
and you're like, oh, I don't do paper crafts. I don't do any of that stuff. Well, hello, you can use paper stuff in conjunction with your scan and cut. And I showed this the other day, if you guys were with me, but scan and cut also will draw. And I am making a mess. And when it draws, now I'm working on a quilt. And the quilt is going to be a um, memory quilt for my aunt. So it will draw in your scan and cut with the inks you can use that come with it. Or you can purchase inks. But I drew on fabric. So every block is going to have but aunt, believe, love. But I just drew right on the fabric from the scan and cut. So you could do something fun like that to make a pretty wall hanging type quilt um, and use it to draw with. But when we back on our home decor and I'm gonna hope that the lighting will get dark enough for this to work because you know, it's like your kids it never works when you want it to. Um, <laughs> oh, there. Can you guys see the little light that came on in my lantern? Yes, so, we can. This is, and I'm gonna move that. This is all gold metallic paper so this is oh a card stock. now this is a lantern i mean you know you want to talk about home decor what about on your patio around the pool you know hopefully one day soon it's going to be warm again spring again but what a great way to i just have a motion sensor lamp in there so you know it goes on and off but um you could put lighting in there but how beautiful would that be if you got a wedding coming up mm -hmm. to decorate around the tables and things like that and then something else fun, you know, oftentimes when we think of home decor, we think of big things. And I wanted to show everything doesn't have to be big. Start small, you know. And so if you're going to decorate your tables with your lanterns, then you'll want to decorate your little water bottles. Oh, so this I love that. Has my name on it. And so <laughs> this is your place card uh, at every place setting. So everyone knows where to sit. Six feet, of course, of course, of, uh, of course. And so you put your little uh bottles right there and then you have bottles that match your you know lanterns that match your that match your that match your so those are just a lot of fun things that you can do and one of the other things that i did my um i have my first great nephew and when he turned uh he's now six well when he was a baby um they live in california so when he's a baby they you know teach him to swim early on so he's in the water and so the little picture frame i decorated with paper so this is a paper cut and this border comes from your scan and cut it's built in i did resize it and one of the things that i noticed people have a tendency to do is they use the print and then they throw away the relief well use your relief so that's what i did with the little hearts in the corners to just oh. stick them there. So this came from in here and I didn't throw them away. So instead of throwing them away, I just added little hearts on there. So this is gonna be a picture for him, you know, but this is a little inexpensive. You can get it, make sure it's glass because this is um, the plastic ones. If you use a, a heat, you uh, can't um, iron them. And when I say iron the glass, I literally mean you're going to press the glass because I'm going to add Hot, hot fix crystals onto the glass. Oh my gosh. Now, I cannot wait to see this. Hot, go ahead. I can't wait to see this. This is awesome. Doing hot fix crystals on the glass is you heat the glass first. Oh. So normally we put the crystal template onto what we want to press it on, on our fabric. And then you press that here in, in this works on um, champagne glasses, on any glass vases, you heat the glass. If it's a glass round cylinder or something that's awkward, put water in the base, put it in the microwave, heat it up, let it get really hot. You dump the water out and then you stick the crystals on. Now, of course, that can't go in the dishwasher as hand wash. Sorry, I know everybody's like, oh, God, I got to wash by hand. But yes, some things we still need to wash by hand. It's worth and it. So that was a, another fun thing. Now, one of the things that I'm working on right now is my guest bathroom. So um, I believe your guest bathroom is supposed to be just that, a guest bathroom. It's supposed to be, wow. And so I'm embellishing the linens for the guest bath and working on that. So 
in the scanning oh, no. cart. Lewis, now you have a toy. Now you have a cover for your toilet. <laughs> right there. Who was that? And Jackie, who said that? So this is going to be for your toilet. <laughs> I better see now, our names on those towels. <laughs> um, not yet, because I still. Do. Okay, so I'm going to give you in a little advance. The trim is just in because I need everyone's opinion. So you guys got to give me your opinion. So this is my hand towel. So I, the trim, oh, come on, the trim is pinned to it. So I, cause I'm trying to figure out what trim I want to put on it, but this is done in the band. So, you know, when you buy a talent, we'll have that band, that band, and this is fusible. Let me turn this light down a little bit and maybe I, you guys can see that better. If I, I love the There oh, we go. Yeah. Way better. So now you have the beaded trim for the hand towel. This is our brother iron on glitter vinyl. So this is not just for garments and clothing. This it's washable. So you could throw this in the wash. Now, of course, these towels I would probably hand wash. And um, you know, these are your decorative towels. People don't dry their hands on them. You set out your towels for them to do that with. These are the pretty towels that they look at and come back and say, oh my God, they're so gorgeous. And you say, well, thank you. And so <laughs> the trim is pinned on. You guys see, I still have the trim pinned uh, from the <laughs> bolt, but that's gonna be the trim on the end. And then it'll have a monogram that'll go above it. That's gonna be done in embroidery because I'm going to do embossing when I do that. Mm -hmm. That's another lesson. So before you guys ask, Angela will hopefully have us back and I'll teach you embossing. That's in your embroidery machine. And so that's the hand towel. But I love that. Everybody, are you kidding? Having you back, I get this is like the best part of my week. <laughs> and then I'm all creative for the whole, my lampshades are going to be gorgeous. <laughs> well, and then you'll have a lampshade to go in there with your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the <gasps> bath towel. Oh. So that's going to be the bath towel, and it will have the monograms above it. <sighs> And again, this border is in your built in on your scan and cut, but only if you did your update. Now, this one um, is one of the new border patterns. So this is new. It, you won't find it. And I'm using the DX model. Um, so it's in the DX uh, F and the SDX F and the um, XDSD. So this is all again, the glitter vinyl. The trim is just pinned on for right now because I'm, you know, going back and forth between trims. This is the same trim that's on my shower curtain in that oh. bathroom. So that's why I'm using that trim on these. Lewis, and then the face towel will match. Lewis, is that two different trims on the bottom? Did you layer them? No, this is all one trim. Isn't it gorgeous? Really? That's beautiful. Yes. Now, I thought, now see if, now, I don't know if I would wear it probably as a boy, but as a girl, I definitely, Angela, this trim should be on the bottom of a pair of jeans. You want yes. to talk about flashy, oh, yes. and brown. Oh my goodness, with a pair of boots and that yep. trim at the bottom <laughs> and at the bottom, Kim at the bottom of a jacket. Because you jacket. guys don't know, Kim does yep. fabulous work with garments and does embellishment that you will not believe. But that, that trim, trim to me. That I love on it. jeans would be amazing. I think that's Wouldn't gonna be, be my amazing? next. Yeah. Angela, just, you get the trim and I'll buy it from you. <laughs> okay. Well, well, you know, I'll have to get the trim because I got, you know, I have my sources in New York and okay. I can't give away my sources, you all know. Right, all right. And everybody will have my trim and I won't be able to get any. So, hey, but, okay. You know, so, um, in New York, Lewis, we have the garment district. So, in the mm -hmm. garment district, we can get, you know, we, we have trim shops. So, you can get trim. This is stuff. it. <laughs> I gotta find my measuring tape. I'm gonna measure around my leg <laughs> so I know exactly how much to send me for my next you pair of jeans. I'm sending you yards. You can you can then you'll have some left over. I don't try to send exact. You'll get yards. It's <laughs> like food. You don't ever give somebody enough for one. You give them leftover so they can pull it back out a couple of days so that they'll be able to keep it. <laughs> now because this was done in the scan and cut and it was done with the new vinyl auto blade so the blade i didn't do anything i just put the blade in it measured it it cut it it did it precise and perfect and look at how intricate those little curls and swirls are it did a gorgeous job but when you take the p 
peel the vinyl away. So when you're working with those vinyls, and I'm trying to see where my vinyl piece went, and it's probably covered on my mat, but it will be similar to using this paper piece. Okay, so well, while I have you guys there, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out real quick. Now, this is another trim. I'm trying to decide if I want this would be fabulous on jeans, too. Oh. I'm trying to decide if I want to do this trim on the towels instead. No, my bathroom is metallic gold painted, so that's why everything's gold. And so, when you do your vinyl, it cuts <laughs> and it leaves. I'm gonna peel the film off so you guys can see it better. It Lewis, will leave. <laughs> So when it leaves the relief, you this is the correct piece. I was like, this is the pretty piece you're supposed to use. I'll have it backwards. Now yeah. this is what is left. So don't throw that away. I use that as well. You don't want to throw it away. So that's from the hearts from the frame. Now the scroll from the towel that was left, you can go and you can get these. I mean. And again, not affiliated with brother, as Angela would say, like to your local dollar store. Now, I'm not saying which one, just dollar store. They sell canvas for artists, you know, little canvases. So I took the relief and I'm going to make art to go in the bathroom that will match the linens. And oh, then this my. will be on the wall. <laughs> now, this is fusible vinyl. This is the fusible vinyl. And you could see at the end, like I haven't, I just worked on this this morning so I could show you guys this particular one. So it's dangling at the bottom. It does have adhesive on the back. But you know, when you buy artist canvas, if you're trying to press this, this sinks in and it won't uh, adhere because it just mushes in. So you want to take batting and fill this in so that it creates a level, even press surface so that when you press it, it then gives it a nice firm adherence and you oh, can God. turn them either way, you know, la, 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 la. And That's I'll go really back and fill it in with other little pieces. And so with the nice thing with the vinyl and I'm going to hold this up and I'm going to, and I'm going to send this to Angela as a gift. Now, everyone look very closely and look very good. I'm not sending her this as a gift. I'm sending a gift to the winner. The winner is going to tell us, Angela's going to get a lot of responses, where in the pattern my vinyl tore and ripped, and I had to put in another piece. Hmm. Hmm. I'm looking That's really close. With vinyl, and I know exactly where it's at, and I'm not going to tell you, but you can tell Angela if you know where it's at. Take a screenshot of this screen if you can with your phone or whatever. And then draw a circle around where you think it will be and send it to Angela. And whoever gets it right is going to win the prize. Okay, now, so I know. This is how we'll you do will this. Never get it right. You will not so get it right. Everyone take a I'm photo. Gonna, you'll never get it right. I'm going to take, take a, a photo of myself. I'm taking you'll a photo of the screen. Right. Okay. Now, the reason you'll never guess is because glitter vinyl and the vinyls especially if it's the glitter vinyl, you can iron a, a layer on a layer. So you can't, you won't know, you know, especially when you start doing really fine, intricate little thin lines like in here where the stems are, you can rip it as you're weeding it. And it will, it'll rip. It's not the end of the world. Don't go crazy. Just, you know, keep, keep going. And when you keep going, you go back in and you fill it in with another little piece from the excess you have. And no one will know the difference. And <laughs> this is the one thing I have to say to all my ladies. Do not point out where it's at. Because that's the first thing ladies do is tell you what's wrong with something. As soon as you guys get a compliment, oh, God, your hair is beautiful. Oh, she cut it too short over here. Oh, I love your shoes. Oh, I got them on sale. Stop telling your business. Just say thank you. <laughs> Say thank you. You act like you're from the South. You smile. You be very ladylike and say thank you. So don't point it out. <laughs> and if somebody goes in and finds it, because you know that evil sister you have that always critiques everything, says, well, why did you do that right there? You say, because it's in my house. That's why I like it. You don't like it, you don't got to come back over here no more. So, Bless your but, heart. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So this is the artwork that's going to go with the towel. So I'm going to go into Scan and Cut Canvas to show you how you make it fit because <laughs> you have to size this stuff to make it fit. Scan and Cut Canvas is a free software program that is available to anyone and it works with your scan and cut machines all of them that it works for every scan and cut model it's free the nice thing is that it is also a mobile software you do not have to install it on anything so right now where everybody's covid vaccine covid testing you got to go to the doctor it's hours and hours and hours you could be sitting there on your tablet doing your scan and cut canvas designs you could be on your computer drawing on your phone you could be making stuff so when you get back home all you do is click send wi-fi your scan and cut that has the wi-fi in it will receive it and it's ready to cut when you get back home so no excuses for not i don't have time i don't believe it you do have time if i have time you, have time. you don't have children either really quick that i'm working on so like this is a finished you know pillow that has the um insert and the side okay so this part so in the scan and cut what i'm doing for my bedroom my bedroom is in grays and charcoals and things is i'm doing monogrammed pillows so this is on vinyl so this is vinyl and then this is glitter vinyl so i'm doing monogrammed pillows so this will have a trim around it and then the border you know just like this one so it'll be more it'll look like this when it's finished but this is what it, i'm working on right now and i just started on these to do this now these lettering the nice thing again in canvas is that every true type font is there all the fonts are there you can cut things in any lettering style that you want and in any font so again no excuse for not having something that you want to cut and then oh yes marcia that's canvas workspace same thing Yes, Canvas Workspace, and I'm going to pop that up. I got, oh, it's, I hid it all the way under here. So, you know, when you buy those clear bins and you have the lids, well, I have clear bins all the way around. I'm not going to show you how junky everything else. This looks pretty. You can't see the junk. <laughs> well, the, the bins, I don't cover, I don't put the lids on some of them because the stuff is too tall, and, but it, and it's organized and neat. Don't get me wrong. So, I have the lids, you know, the empty lids that I have. And I usually put them under the bin and set the bin on top. But I was digging around and I have a bunch of bins and I thought um, I have a bunch of lids and I was like, oh my God, I could use those as art. So these I'm working, I cut the fleur de lis and this is now going to be art. This is wow. puffy foam and it's adhesive puffy foam that I used in scan and cut. So I will cut some more and then I'll put a frame around this and it has a hanger so i can hang this as a framed piece of art from the lid of the bin that i bought that i'm not using so i thought that that was kind of a clever thing very cool everything's going to be customized everything everything should be custom to your likes your colors your taste your flair whatever you like in the back you'll see my this quilt that's a wall hanging the leaves in the quilt, those are cut from scan and cut. And then the leaf pattern, so this fabric that has the pattern of the leaves in it, I scanned the fabric in on my scan and cut, and that became the applique that went to my embroidery machine that could be applique on. So I took the fabric, scanned it in my luminaire, told it to become an applique, sent it to scan and cut. It cut the leaves out. I didn't sit and trim those. So you can use your machine with it as well but again fabric paper and don't forget um we also do wonderful besides the glitter and the vinyl and all that kind of stuff and if you guys saw um the other day thanks for participating but um you know one of the one of the uh, kits available for your scan and cut is foiling you could do foiling so this would be beautiful to create. I'm making tiles. So this is going to be foiled on ceramic tiles. So those tiles I'm going to be putting in my, my bathroom because my bathroom is gray and silvers and stuff. But 
Look at how gorgeous the pattern is. Uh, Lewis, you have got to give us a tutorial on that because I'm getting ready to put tile on my bathroom sink here at the office. Just, I thought oh it'd be fun. This would be fantastic. This is so much fun and it's so simple and so easy, but wouldn't that make just a wow thing? And okay, now a bathroom project might be a little daunting and you're like, okay, I'm not redoing my bath, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you, you know, and I'm, again, one of my biggest things is start small. So go to your um, home goods, uh, home, home improvement store or to the thrift store or to, you know, there's, um, you know, all kinds of places you could get just tiles and just buy a couple of tiles and use it as a trivet. You could use it as a, you know, to put hot plates on, um, not with the foiling, because these are the pretty ones, but those would be beautiful decorated, just set around on a table. You can make them all as coasters, because this will be okay to set, you know, something on. I would probably put a clear uh, acrylic over it or clear polyurethane, something over it, but you made out of that tile, it's a gorgeous coaster. I mean, what a great gift idea. Do a set of six of them, you give them as gifts. And they're going to be like, oh my God, where did you get them? You're like, oh, I made them. No big <laughs> deal. But in home decorating, again, small projects, we also do etching. And this oh, is an, on the glass, this particular design and pattern. Now, you use the template this is done with a template so the scan and cut didn't print put this on here it was done with a template so it cut the template pattern so when it cuts the pattern and we're going to pretend right now so let's say this is my little this a little elephant so say i wanted to put that on some kids plates or something like that for a birthday party and you know there uh, as a keepsake so when you put this on the plate then you're going to use this inside to do this but you're using the template material from the rhinestone kit to do this. Now you cut the shape and you stick it to it. Traditional etching. This is not traditional etching. This is faux etching, but it looks real, right? It, it, you, it you can't totally looks real. Well, I'm going to tell you a little tip and a little trick on how you do faux etching. And I normally charge extra for this, but I'm going to give it to you guys for free. So, we to, love do faux etching. <laughs> <laughs> to do faux etching, you go to your um your uh, home improvement store, to your craft store, to your big box uh, retailer, wherever, not wherever, but most places that sell canned spray paint. And you're looking in the aisle where they sell spray paint and you're going to look for frosted glass spray paint. Frosted this glass. Is frosted glass spray painted. So it's a lot easier than the etching when you got to buy the expensive kit and buy the cream and buy the stuff and dab it on and make it dry and make sure it doesn't ooze. And that's, I live in New York. I don't have space, time, or place for that. And I don't have I the energy. Down. <laughs> so, but the really cool thing about the frosted glass spray paint, see, the etching cream only comes like this. Now, Kim, of course, is excruciatingly creative. So she probably would have mixed it up in a bowl and tinted and make it into the color she wants. Again, Lewis is not doing that. No, 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 no. You can buy the frosted glass in green and blue and yellow. You can make the frost a different color. But how that. could that also be on a mirror? So what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. also I cut this earlier and I'm going to use this on a mirror. So you want to go again to your little cheapy store. And now this particular, this was cut on out of acrylic, a little clear acrylic. So I'm going to put this on the mirror and then I'm going to use the frosted glass spray paint to create a mirror insert for a tray. And oh that'll, be a a tray. That'll, that'll be a jewelry Good. tray. I have to Perfect. hate to tell you this, no pressure, right? But everyone here, first off, wants to see your bathroom when it's done. And I think <laughs> we're going to have to have an entire tour of your house because <laughs> in the bathroom, everyone's talking about the bathroom. We got to see the bathroom when you're done. <laughs> well, I would love to show you guys that when it's all finished. It might be a while because I'm working on a quilt that's going to go on the wall. And that quilt <laughs> is all free motion. So oh my and it's all free motion with metallic thread. So that one might take me a little bit of time, but <laughs> I'm happy to show you. But 
if you get to come, you know, I leave in my guest bathroom for all our guests. They always get a monogram bathrobe and monogram slippers to match. And they get a little care basket with their lotions and the eye mask and aromatherapy spray for the night when they go to sleep to put lavender on the pillows to help them relax. And a little candle and a calming CD that they can listen to music. So <laughs> yeah. you- let's go. Oh, I'm coming over to your house, Lewis. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, and let me tell I'm you, that's there. only for there's only four guests that I'm not that really familiar with. Angela and Kim, you are like sisters. You just come and it's okay. junky. You see it like you see it. <laughs> We're on our own, Angela. <laughs> I'll tell you the yeah, best I want. Own own. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a little, you know, I put a little, you know, little uh, one of those little small bottles of champagne and some flute. So you know, they come in and they feel welcomed. You're supposed to. Be nice. You know, when people come to your house, my mother always said, you know, people should want to not want to leave your home when they come. However, they do know they have to go. We got reservations rolling in for you, Louis. Go to LewisParty.com. You might be lucky. Maybe we'll put a drawing up there to stay as a guest at the Lewis Carney guest house. A a guest guest room, not guest house. I don't have it like that. Chocolate on the pillow. I, I, you know what we started doing is not do. We were doing the chocolates, but they were melting. So, <laughs> so because it's so uh, warm I, there. It was. Cho- I have to tell you guys a funny story real quick. One of my friends told me that one of her girlfriends went and they had the chocolates on the pillow in the hotel, and she was so tired she fell asleep. She woke up in the middle of the night and she said, "Oh my God, did I go to the bathroom myself?" Because the chocolate had melted into her nightgown. So, no chocolates on the pillows because I have nice sheets and you're not going to ruin my sheets with the chocolate. <laughs> but I'm going to go over and go to Canvas real quick so I can show you guys something really cool. It says oh, I'm gosh. sharing right now. So, do you guys see Canvas on there? Uh, we sure can. And I don't know how we keep going back to the toilet, but let's go to Canvas. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna um, uh, talk about that while I'm doing this. That beautiful picture frame, what a gorgeous toilet seat cover that would make. You could put the vinyl onto the cover of your on your toilet seat, and your toilet seat will match your linens that will match your uh, wall art, and it will be gorgeous. You know, so put it on the put it on the lid, not on the seat. You don't want to sit on it. Well, I don't want to sit on it, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, but goodness. I'm going to pop up something simple. See, this is Canvas Workspace. So whenever you open Canvas Workspace, it's going to open up and it'll have your shapes open. That is just the default. When you go there and you're like, okay, why well, are the shapes open? I don't want that. You just tap on it again and it'll go away. So here are all the different things you could do with it. And I'm going to go back to the shapes because I want to go and pull up a border because maybe I want to do the towels or maybe I want to do a frame. So I'm like, okay, these are the shapes. Where are the borders? Well, right here are the subcategories. So we're going to go to a subcategory and we're going to choose one of these lovely frames and borders, as you can see. Now, uh, Kim and I's boss is getting ready to be a Nana. So she's going to be a grandma for the first time. So She doesn't know this yet, but she's probably listening to I'm ruining the surprise. (laughs) But I'm going to do a picture frame for her, for the baby, when the baby comes home. And I'm going to use the little teddy bears. Let's get rid of that little scallop one. And I'm going to use the little teddy bears to go all the way around the picture frame. And this right now says that it's a cut file. Can you guys see where I'm at over here? Mm -hmm. And that tells me the operation, what it's going to be and what it's going to do. So I need to set the size for this. Right now, it's just telling me what it's doing. When I come over and I select my um, edit properties in the position and the size, this is where you could just customize the size. You could tell it to keep the ratio or you could put in a custom size. You can mirror image this. You could flip it. You could do all kinds of things with any of the patterns. Now, these operations are available to 99% of the patterns. Well, let's say... I wanted this to be in crystals because I thought, oh, it will be cute in crystals. 
Right now, it says there are no crystals there. So I'm going to tell it to do that in an outline of the crystals. And look, there it is. It's going to cut the crystal template for me. How cute would that be in crystals? But let's say you don't want a whole teddy bear. You only want one little teddy bear. You're like, well, I need one. I want to cut away the rest. So when you select this, your, your uh, graphic, this is a graphic image right now, pretty much is a workspace file. Now I can change this. You don't have to tell it sizes. You can drag this, of course, and you can move it. You can position it. You can tell it all kinds of things. Come on and grab. Now what I just did, do you see that? I double clicked and it gave me the nodes. I'm going to undo that so you guys can see it again. So when we go back, I'm going to select it and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. And I can then double click. And when you double click this, it puts those little dots around. And when you have the little dots around, oops, I'm hitting too many times. You got to wait for it to do it. So these little dots allow you to stretch things and change things. So we'll zoom in so you can see what I'm saying. So right now, there's my teddy bear. Well, I, oh, that's too big. We don't want to be a thousand percent. So let's change that back down to uh, 200 maybe. And then there. So now, uh, this is my mouse doing that, guys. So these are the little, we want to turn the zoom off because we now want to move this over so we could see it a little bit better. And now I want to do some editing of these. I can go in and add stuff. I could change stuff. I can do any kind of things with this. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to get that back to my notes. And then I'm going to tell it that I want to play with this. So here it is selected. We'll get it selected again. And I'm sorry, you know, there's a lag time when you're on your computer and you're sharing this on the StreamYard stuff or the Zoom or any of these platforms. I'm not calling out one particular one. Um, but there's a, a little lag, so you guys have to forgive me. Um, let me get it back to where it's zoomed again. Come on, baby, select. Give me my nodes. So now I can go in and I can go and move these nodes. And so if I want them, their arms to be straighter at the top and not dragged like that, I can go along and I can select each one. And then I can play with this and change all of them and make them so that everyone's arms are going up. And you would just continue along in that manner. I'm gonna zoom back down so you guys can see kind of what it looks like now. Um, and so you'll see that now, see these guys have the arm up, arm down, arm up, arm down. But these are all editable is what, editable is what I want to show you, that you can make all kinds of changes to things. So it allows you to do really cool stuff. Well, since the teddy bear's there, and we're going to put that as the frame like I did with the hearts, we're going to want to add the baby's name. So if they've already named it, I don't know if they've named it, but we're going to add the name. So we'll click on T. When you click on T for your text, it asks you to start typing. So we're going to come down here, drag us a box, and start to type. And we're going to name the baby, baby. Well, not A77. I don't know who that is. Baby, baby. Baby, baby. Oh, my baby, baby. So there's my baby. I'm going to move that so you guys can maybe see it. Now, I said, oh, I don't want that particular font. I can come up, and as long as that's selected, when you do your use your drop down for your fonts, it'll give you your recently used fonts. So that's what will be at the top. And you're like, well, this is not all the fonts. Well, as you scroll down, it says all fonts. So all of those fonts you have on your computers, Guys, you could use them in scan and cut. So, you know, this is a baby. So we might want something fun like the comic. And I might want the baby to actually be in crystals instead of just a vinyl cut. Now, see, it didn't do that one so well because this is probably really a tiny right now. See, this is only two inches. So you want to make sure your sizing is right. You have undo whenever you don't want to use whatever you just did. We'll select it so we could see what is the size on this. Oh, yeah. So see, it's only an inch tall. So the crystals are like, OK, what do you want me to do? I can't put crystals in that space. You know, work with me. Help me to help you. So we could do baby here. You could add lettering. You could put the date. You could put all kinds of stuff there to have fun with. And then when you get the first picture of the baby, we can import, do an image trace. So we're going to go and do an auto image trace. And I'm going to get an auto image trace 
from my computer and I'm going to tell it that I need to go and get um, where to get the file. So you can go choose where you got their files at. I'm going to just go and choose something really quick. This is not necessarily what we would use right here. So I but I want you to see. So I'm going to go to artwork. Let's see what we have here. And so I actually uh, do have a little nephew that is uh, he's a gamer. Um, let's use the paw, for example. So this is a PNG file. It's a graphic. So I'm going to open that up. And when I do, it says, oh, well, what do you want to do? And you could see that it's outlined all of the colors, right? So it's seeing this. Now I'm going to reduce this because it's only black and white. So I only need two colors. So it's only going to see the colors. Now let's say inside of the pause, there was another little hole or another little something. You would want to come over and you would want to trace the area by color because then it will also go to the inside. But you also have the enhance. Now this is the update and the up, uh, updated version of this. So that's why I have three. You may only have two. Make sure that you have your Canvas workspace set up to do the auto update so that you'll get um, updates automatically. I'm going to simply tell it OK at this point. And when I tell it OK, it's processing. Voila, there is my little paw. Now, this paw can be whatever I want it to be. I'm like, oh, it's so cool. I'm going to it's selected right now. So I can come up and say it's going to ask me, well, what, it, what do you want to do with this? And I'm going to tell it that I want it to cut that so I could put the little paw prints to go with the teddy bear by the baby. So I said, oh, I can even separate them and use them as independent little things. And I can make the paw whatever I want to because it traced the outline. So right now, when you see that, it has the image there. It's still the image. You're like, well, why does it have the image? I don't want to see the image. When we come over to layers, you can say, oh, get rid of the image so that it does not show this. So we're going to turn that off and it won't show it. And so now you'll only see the paw. So now when I move that down and I'll scroll down so you guys can see. And I'll put the little pieces of come here and move, baby. Thank you. So these guys were over here because these are the outlines. So I could put it back the way it was. And now this would be so cute as a little separate um, thing to go with the teddy bear on there. But you can use all the graphics and tell it to trace it. It'll even take photos. If you have old pictures, you get, it'll trace around the people in the pictures and you could use that and put that on a piece of canvas and make art. How cool is canvas guys? There's like so much in here. I can't possibly, we would have to spend, you know, like months because it does so entirely so much. So it is so, so just cool. But that's how you can create stuff and play around with it. But it's free. The lantern that I use to create, this came from Scan and Cut Canvas, your workspace. It is a free project. It's called a recipe. We give those to you five to six of them a month free. The directions, the pattern, the cutting, it tells you what to do. The only thing we don't give you is the supplies. You know, you got to do something, okay? So we get we tell you how to make it start to finish, scratch, all the way. And they're free. Please use those because if you guys don't use them, you know, like with any company, they say, look, we're spending a lot of money on this. You guys are not using it, so we're not going to spend money on it anymore. So please, please, please use them. Thanks. And Jim. when you need to know there, about this, um, bring that okay, lantern. Bring that lantern one more time, Louis. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead and show the playbook. But then we want to see your lantern one more time. There's like a few people asked about that. Oh, the playbook. Oh, the best. This is going to teach you start to finish about your scan and cut. So please use the get the owner's playbook because it does. So I'm going to move my little bottle. Now, this is really a kind of just cute. You know, this I just did it for waters because, you know, it was for brunch. But, you know, it could be little wine bottles or, you know, apple cider if you don't drink. So. The lantern, this is paper, so it's just glued. These edges are glued together to hold it together. But then on the inside, um, they tell you what the recommended, you know, if you're putting a particular type of light, you don't want to put a certain type of uh, paper on the inside because it could be flammable. But this one, I'm using this motion light 
and it's too light in here for it to go off. So let me see if I can make it dark and it'll go off. Um, and I'll get it nice and dark in here. That way you guys can see the lantern lit up. Oh, let's just Tell turn Lewis. this all together and then let's see. And then you have your lantern. There it goes. Lewis, this, this fixed something for me just now. So when we redid our family room, we have shelves now and I have stuff on the shelves, but I wanted lighting and I'm too, you know, I mean, it's too expensive to put built in lights and all that. So I bought these big boxes of remote <laughs> control um, candles. The remote oh my control God. So I'm hiding them behind the things. And then when I, at night, you take the remotes and go click, 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 turn them all on. But but they're not pretty, you know? So you have to hide them behind the books pretty and behind cool. the picture frames and stuff. So this, I can put my remote control candles up on the very high shelves and just That's click cool. away in, at night. And it That's will be lovely. Yeah. It will Thank be so you, beautiful. Lewis. And then you, that would be such a beautiful, that would, I mean, just the ambiance, but the yeah. other thing, which I don't have time to show you guys, but I would share with you also, the trick for the tip or the trick for ugly candles is you're going to use, um, the, especially the remote control. Okay, I'm not talking about ones you're lighting and burning, guys. But no, no. you're <laughs> going to use our new wonderful cork, and you take the cork and you cut a pretty lacy template out of it, uh. and you cut it out of the cork and you wrap it around the mm. candle. Mm -hmm. And you have a gorgeous candle now. Mm -hmm. oh my what God. a great gift great idea, idea, too. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Hey, Betty, by the way, that book that he just showed, she wants to know if there's a playbook for Canvas Workspace. That is the playbook for the Scan and Cut, which there's a lot of things in there that show you how to use Canvas Workspace in there, too. That does talk about that. And then also, please remember that we are always available for any time if you're working in Canvas Workspace. There's a contact us. You can email, you can call. We always offer you support and help so we don't ever just leave you stuck out there. So if you're working and you can't figure out something, email us. Take a screenshot, email us. Somebody will get back to you so that they can try to help you through the process. But there are also tutorials and helpful videos in Canvas Workspace. So yeah. anytime you need help, we try to give you help. Yeah, and they're free. And if you, you need to go back because each month there's more. There's more, there's more. Just like, right. and there's also, you can go to the blog. Brother Sows. There's some on there. There's also the Scan and Cut blog. There's so many places for free stuff for you to be working on, especially while you're home. Well, <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But there, I mean, right now, you know, we have so many fun things. But again, um, the cork is, again, another wonderful uh, decorating project. You could use it with the coasters and stuff. And then, like I said, this um, adhesive foam, this is, um, you could make these, these are great coasters. So if you wanted to make a nice little gift set for somebody, you give them a beautiful set of glasses that you have etched with your faux etching and you make coasters to go with the glasses and you bundle it up in a lovely little gift basket or gift bag that you could put stuff in and you made the bag so all the stuff goes in that and then like here this is a um this one is in particular it's a wine bag but you can get these in different sizes and you make the little bag that you're going to then iron on to put the glasses and the coasters and the bottle of wine or whatever and you make that and give that as a gift set to somebody oh my god you want to talk about they're going to be like so thrilled they're going to be amazed at what kind of gift is this and literally guys it's cost you nothing to do that it's so inexpensive to do that i'm yeah. sure you all have fabric you got some vinyl go buy some cheap glasses because you're etching on them don't buy good okay this is not waterford you're not going to tiffany's and order crystal okay no affiliation Just, brother by the way <laughs> no affiliation none whatsoever but <laughs> You don't go buy good crystal, okay? You buy cheap glass because you're going to etch it. And then you etch on the glass, just put their monogram and then the wine and the wine bottle and then or the apple cider, whatever you like, soda, juice. 
Um, and then you have a beautiful gift. I mean, you know, but what a great way to brighten somebody else's day out of stuff you already got, you know, stuff you already have. And if you really love them, then you make a beautiful picture frame and you put a nice picture, maybe not of you, but maybe of you two together. You want to be vain. You put a picture of the two of you together and give them a lovely picture frame. That's one of a kind. These, that's the thing about this is decorating is one of a kind. Nobody else is going to do this, guys. Nobody else right. is going to have that because you made it up. <laughs> so just a couple quick questions on the playbook. You go to your brother dealer, call your local brother dealer to get that. That's where you'll find it. And the one that he's referring to now was using, uh, did Cindy use the newest scan and cut? But there's still applications in there that you can use. Yes, because yeah. it does tell you about the, the scan and cut while it has you know, I have a older scan and cut. I have older scan and cut. I have newer scan. I, I have a few scan and cuts. But, um, you know, it's like kids. When you get, are raising your family, you have a new baby. You don't get rid of one of your kids because you have a new kid. So you just keep your other kid and then you have a new kid. So my new baby, um, it, they're, the screens are very similar. The things that they can do are similar. So even though it applies to... Uh, it's written for specifically the newer scanning cuts. There's things in there that will help you to learn to use your scanning cut, no matter how old it is, because those screens, while the, they've evolved, they've changed, they've given you more. They still always have the basics. It's just same thing with just like our brother machines, our basic embroidery machines has the icons are the same from basic to the very top of the line. So, don't ever feel like because you have something maybe more basic or older that the new stuff doesn't apply to you. You can always learn. And that's the one thing I will say about Brother and their products is that they translate up. They don't they don't all of a sudden come out with something completely so different that you're mm -hmm. like, I got to buy new feet. I got to buy new bobbins. I got to buy new new mats. You know, you know, most of it will. Now, of course, the new scan and cut because it's automatic does require a new mat, new blade. However, the brain of the machine the brain is the same mm -hmm. it's just so far as some of the screen captures and some of the different things they can do they all can cut they all can draw and they all can scan so if you and i knocked everything over when i was over here looking at trying to get stuff for you guys because i wanted to show you so much and so you don't even want to see this room you go again you get a little coloring book Oh my God, scan and cut. How cute would that be um, um, to do on, you know, the newest one can use a six foot roll of vinyl, but wouldn't that be the cutest border? You link these together and do a border around it. But I also don't want people to just think that, okay, borders are for things for kids or stuff like that. Okay, these drawings are great. You could do them. You're going to use your scan mat, which is an optional purchase. And the scan mat will allow you to scrawl scrawl uh, will allow you to scan drawings and things like that but that's also how you can use it say for example the lampshade like kim did say you don't you know have an embroidery machine or you don't feel like doing it in embroidery you could scan a graphic and into your scan and cut and then put the vinyl on your lampshade mm -hmm. so there's a lot of ideas there that, you know, we want you guys to get out of your box. You know, everybody gets in a box. We all are guilty of it. We start on one thing and we just stick there and we get stuck there. New year, new day, new everything. Get out of your box. Just, you don't have to go venture far. I'm not trying to scare anyone. Just go out the door, go in the front yard and maybe put a different flower than you normally put. But uh, speaking of flowers, you know, it's gonna be spring soon. So what a great fun thing to do with your skin and cut, decorate your flower pots. Go to the thrift store, buy something cheap, old, make it pretty. I have a question. One. Cindy said her granddaughter's birthday is tomorrow. She turns 15. Hey, congrats, Cindy. And they're driving in. What is a the quick first scan and cut I could make? I have 24 hours. I would say anything <laughs> he showed, actually. Yes. Well, actually, the first thing you're going to do is use your inks, and you're going to draw her an adorable birthday card. So whatever kind of um things she likes dora whoever you know the wonder woman uh the wildcats the bob you know football whatever she likes 
make her a card in the scanning cook because all you gotta do is type it out boom put the card in you're gonna make her a card then um what it you know depending on what it is she kind of really likes i would you know do something if you have the rhinestone kit if she likes blingy if she's a blingy person you could do something blingy if you have some of the vinyls you could do something say hey i know that you you know you're going how old did she say 15 15 15 so she's at that stage where it's really hard to buy for you usually have to start giving them money because you know <laughs> but they all have tablets they all have computers they all have cell phones do whatever thing she likes do a vinyl cutout that she could put on the back of her tablet or the back of it and personalize it mm -hmm. quick mm -hmm. fast Even easy she's got a gorgeous yep. exactly yep quick fast and easy i mean it, and then it's hers and it's you know they call it skins so you make her a skin to go on her um right. her device and she will love it yeah mm -hmm. and if i put a fish on mine cindy i don't know if she likes fishing but there's a built-in fish and i stuck it right in the back and i just gave that to my mom because i got a new phone so now i got to do another fish but i'm gonna add a little bling to this fish it's got to be a little more colorful so there's yeah. so many built-ins there's so many built-in pretty designs to do on i did um create to put on my cabinet in the other room um that i was, was actually really cool. i was sitting on a, a car rental bus you know at the airport and this young woman sitting across from me had her phone up and the back of her phone had this little thing on the back and i always remember it it's like i want to put this on my phone or my tablet on the back side it said i am living my ancestors wildest dream and oh my god awesome? that's a great it almost made me cry i was like wow that most well, of us I come mean, from you know, immigrants like they, you know and here she's sitting on this bus you know the rental car and i thought that is so insightful wow that well, is if our grandmothers could sit, who sewed and crafted and did all this stuff if they could see what we could do now yes. today yeah you know it would blow their mind so you know we got we have all this technology all this wonderful stuff you know you got to take advantage of it and i'm going to borrow a saying from a dear deceased friend that you know five uh 10 15 5 10 15. take if you have five minutes go do something and then repeat it again you got 10 minutes go in there and just do something do something quick because it helps you learn your product you don't need to dedicate an hour dedicate 30 minutes you got 10 minutes go in there put something in the scan and cut learn how to do it and repeat it the rule of thumb is if you make something the first time you make it you give it away the second time you make it you give it away the third one is the pretty one that's the one you keep for you <laughs> but you've repeated it three times so you have learned that process yes. psychologists have said that after we reach 30 you need to repeat something a minimum of three times to retain it now Only you three. do that so you know how many times you need to repeat so repeat repeat, so. repeat we're not going there <laughs> oh angela please you won't even have to repeat once i mean you could do it one time and then i mean look at you baby please but the point is that if you keep what you make when you're making samples you don't do it again give it away because then you have to start from scratch and if you yeah. start from scratch you got to learn it all over again and the more you repeat something the the more you retain it but don't feel like you got to have a lot of time. It's scan and cut. It's, it's, it's easy. It's the embroidery machine. Put some, always have something hooped. Because you can always hit start on your machine and go. Always have something hooped. A bath towel, a robe, a piece of fabric, a quilt block, whatever. Always have something ready to go. That you could just stick in the machine because I'm getting ready to go in the shower. And you go in there. So at 60, you need six times. At 550, you need five times. Hey, again, do your own math. We don't need to know. But repeat, repeat, repeat is the process. Give it away so you'll redo it and you will retain and you will know as much about these products as Angela and Kim and myself if you do that. Well, Lewis, the other thing is don't be afraid to make a mistake. On Scan and Cut, it's only a little bit of paper. It's a little bit of fabric. On embroidery, you know, nobody ever like died from having a bad embroidery experience, right? So, I yeah, I don't think so. That, I've met ladies they that did, was it so, wasn't because of that. Right, that, that was an underlying medical condition. But um, 
but I've met women who are so terrified. It's like, I'm so afraid. It's like, look, it's just fabric. Just throw it away if it's terrible. Just don't worry about it. It's not brain. It's not Actually, the end I had of the a world. student who was yeah. a cardiologist. And I didn't know when I met her, she was a cardiologist. And she came into the class and she's, oh, oh, and she, she was just all stressed out. And I said, first of all, this is only fabric. You need to you need to just stop. Take a deep breath. This is not brain surgery here. And her friends were rolling on the floor laughing. I said, why was that funny? She said, well, she's a cardiologist. <laughs> I said, okay, it's also not heart surgery. This is supposed to be fun. If you're not having fun, just take a break and come back. And, and if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. So that's, so that's my philosophy. Do it, try it, say, well, what if? Okay, that was good. Now what if I do it this way? And what if I try this instead? What if I push this button on the scan and cut? You know, just try it. No, See what happens. Wrong. There's no right or wrong. Right. And also on these machines, there's there's about a dozen different ways to accomplish the same thing. So some people will say, oh, no, I was told you have to do this and you have to do that. Well, that's probably will accomplish it, but you can also do it this way. You can yeah. move the only it this thing way. You have to do is wake up in the morning. After that, you then you keep going. Right. The, right. The, you have all the hard. options open. So, so I don't know. I'm not going to ask you guys because I don't know your ages and I don't want to put it out in public. But I have been embroidering, sewing, quilting, doing a lot of stuff for many, many decades. And I have never, I've never had a mistake. I, I don't have mistakes. No. I have had a million and one creative opportunities. Yes. Yeah. But I've never had a mistake. Yes. That's why so, God made um, crystals, made appliques, made embroideries, made embroidery machines, made metallic thread. Slap something on the top of it, it's fine. Don't tell nobody, <laughs> ladies. Don't tell them. Just right. make it and go. Well, and the other thing, too, is if you have something that didn't come out the way you thought it was going to, like Lewis said, it's a creative opportunity. And it's also tuition. You know, you go to college, you pay tuition, you learn stuff. And here, that's cheap tuition, you know, a little piece of fabric and some stabilizers. But if you don't learn from that, then you've wasted the opportunity. But Totally. So before, th this has been so much fun, but I there's been questions rolling. I got, like, just before we end, we got, Lewis, I got to feel your jacket. What <laughs> fabric is that? Oh, no, 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 no. So... <laughs> You all know that I do blingy, blingy, blingy. And again, I didn't do blingy today because <laughs> this was all made fabric. This oh. was done with our needle felting kit. So you, for your machines, this is the sewing machine or sewing and embroidery. So this was done where these are threads and I just laid them on top of the black and I just made loop circles and I just free motioned it. And this is felted to itself. Mm -hmm. So when you felt something to itself, there are barbed needles and there's generally multiple needles that go in their one single needle holder. Those barbed needles then push the fibers into each other so that they become one fabric. There's no bobbin, there's no thread, and you do not, and you turn off your thread sensor when you are using them. It is available from your brother dealer. It also shows you about it on our website if you go and look at accessories or in your app. And then you also have uh, that will let you do all kinds of cool things. And I believe, Kim, did you go get something felted? And I want to see your jacket. So oh, everyone's asking if you made your jacket. This is what it looks like, guys. Oh, yeah, that's it. And I it goes in your the, needle, the needle holder. Yeah, and then it has. There's no eyes in the needles. That's the it kit. So, Lewis, what fabric? What fabric is that then? I'm just curious. Like, is that is two wool. fabrics? Wool. 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 And, this is a wool and cashmere, and then a wool yarn. Okay, because there was a ton of people asking, "Did you make that?" And I was like, "I'll feel it and yeah, see." Yeah, I, I did make this <laughs> one. Now, and so then you, know, you just create your fabric, and now I don't have it to show you, but maybe Angelo will have us back, and we could talk about felting. But mm -hmm. if you take silk dupioni and felt it to itself, that's my favorite. That's it my favorite, favorite. Samples. 
Yes, we'll definitely have to have a full one just for felting because there's so many different fabrics. You don't have to just use wool. Silk Dubioni is my absolute favorite. And I think we're gonna have to have a special show just for that because I just bought some in a mag like a multi-magnetic color. I think we could have a lot of fun with this. So uh, hey Kim, by the way. Yes, yes. Um, your you made your jacket, or is it a refashion? Uh which jacket are you talking about? The one you're wearing. No, it's a blouse. <laughs> well, it looks like a jacket. It's a blouse? It's just a, it's just a blouse from it's a cute. retail store. Thank you. Oh, from a retail store. But you could have made it. <laughs> I could, well, I could have. Yes, but I didn't. <laughs> so Don't those are the two questions. Companies or not. Yeah. Those are the questions rolling through, and I saved it to the end. And, yes, I'm wearing my Rouge tee, which um, I made, and I love this fabric. It's super that comfortable. fabric is to die for it's That's crazy beautiful. isn't it it's it's, it's athletic wear so it's very breathable yeah. i was actually yeah. carrying boxes right before the live show so excuse the uh <laughs> look but um it's a rouge tea and i did a twisted neckline which kind of was really fun with that print so it's beautiful oh, my gosh i could hang out here all day with you i'm watching everyone say this is like so much fun so i cannot wait for you guys to come back we are definitely I think I wrote 12 things down that you got to come back for. That would be like every week for the whole year. <laughs> okay. Felting is in. Felting is in. And I cannot wait to get a tour of your bathroom. <laughs> okay. Now that's later down the road. So, you know. Now, one of my friends, she makes, um, she's a quilter and she has a special quilting technique. And one of the thing, quilts that she makes are floor quilts. And everybody mouth drops. They're like a floor quilt. You, yeah, you walk wow. on it. It's a quilt. But that's what I'm doing for my bath mats in my, that room. I'm going to make make my mats that you use. That would be fantastic. Wow. So that will definitely be another one as well because I'm redoing my bathroom. So this is going to be all about all of this and especially <laughs> the tile. So like, okay, yeah, that was oh, number three. Yeah, you got to do your tile. Even if yeah. you did the etching on it. You could etch the tile too with the colored et colored uh, spray paint. Remember yeah. that's frosted spray paint, guys. Lewis, does that it. frosted spray paint comes in colors like a tint? Yes, green oh. and blue and pink and yellow. You can so it makes it even more interesting oh, because okay. do you remember the antique jars that you see that are in the frosted glass that are colors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes in those kind of colors. So you could like layer the colors a little bit too, kind of. And make a cathedral window. You can make yes. a, um, uh, you know, yes. um, um, you know what the windows called, guys. Stained glass. Stained glass. Stained glass. Yeah. Hey, that's the first Jeopardy question. I no affiliation to brother that I've ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to actually in the scan and cut take some of that uh, cell cellophane. Um, that uh, like, you know, you see a binder or folder that's out of different colors and I want to cut those and then I'm going to use the black vinyl and make a little stained glass that hangs in the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Very fun. Uh, well, you well, too, we have to go because great. I want to start making stuff. Now. I know everybody's <laughs> so, uh, okay. So everyone, I saw messages coming through. How are you going to send me the photo of what you opened Pandora's box here, Lewis? So how are they going to send me the photo of what they think is wrong? So this is what we're going to do when I'm finished with the live show, which will be in about 30 seconds. Give me five minutes and I will share this video to my Facebook page. So you go to Facebook.com forward slash Angela Wolf Couture. And I'm going to share this video. And if you found the mistake he made, you have to share a photo in the comments. And I'm going to bring Lewis in too. So you're going to have to tag him. So I will, all you got to do is post a photo there and I'll tag Lewis. And then Lewis can confirm or deny as and of. You got a circle or something, some kind of way you need to show us where you think that rip, vinyl rip, where the mistake is at. Yeah, and, and we'll give you a peek because I know a lot of you watch this on the weekend. So next Wednesday, I will grab Lewis and we're going to see if you are correct or not. How's that? Does that sound fair, Lewis? That sounds like a win, a plan, and then uh, the prize is yet to be determined. So, you know, and no, it's not a scan and cut. So don't even ask. But <laughs> it'll be something fun. <laughs> something fabulous. It might just be just a tutorial to show you all these fabulous things he's doing. So, all right, yeah, guys. This is be some trim i have you know i might send you guys some oh, yeah. trim yeah you know I'll measure my trim legs. New York that you guys can't get anywhere else kim measure your legs <laughs> i'll measure my legs i know i want that trim on my jeans <laughs> mine aren't very long 
<laughs> no, you're going around, honey. I'm not going lengthwise. That's too much. <laughs> what are you going down the sides? No, you're really? gonna look like a cowboy. <laughs> is, I was thinking know, about like flappers, you know. Put oh. A Yes, she would, you know, she goes the opposite of where everybody else does. <laughs> and she's done, you're like, oh my God, I wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> I oh, love what were it. you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what on earth were we thinking? <laughs> well, everyone have a wonderful day. If you came in late, you definitely want to rewatch this show. There's so many ideas. And I just saw somebody say they're going to grab a pen and paper, watch it over, and a video camera. You don't need a video camera. You can watch this as many times as you want. <laughs> but you definitely need a piece of paper on this one because I've got a ton of ideas. So everyone have a wonderful day. Happy sewing and crafting from the brother, uh, brand ambassadors and educators. Louis, Kim, this was so much fun. You guys are a blast. Thanks Can so I? much. For Bye. Us. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming.